man, that was a uh, that was a rough one. All right, welcome back to American Blues Podcast. It's your host Terry Lee. Oh, let's talk about Chelsea Celtic one four. Man, that was oof, I I thought Celtic would be a better team. You know, they just beat City what four three. Brendan Rodgers has always been a really good manager. Um, so I was very curious to see how we would do, but man, I was not expecting that just awful performance. It actually highlighted a lot of the negatives that I thought maybe were just early season kinks from the first game. And I was really curious to see maybe with different personnel, more training, maybe we work it out a little bit more and see it better. But wow, this game was just made it 10 times worse. But as always, like, comment, subscribe. And then let's talk about the positives. Okay, there aren't many, but I actually think that going forward, there's not as much to worry about. Yes, our final third play is lacking. Yes, we're always missing that final ball. Yes, our finishing was lacking. You can say that again and again and again over the last, what, three seasons now. But but given that some of our most important attackers are still either not with the team or resting, such as Cole Palmer, Jackson, I'm starting to think he's probably less important because I really like you, but still, you can't discount Jackson's goals. Enzo Fernandez, despite his drama and his recent uh, very poor judgment, he's still one of the best progressive passers on the team. Caicedo, probably our best defensive midfielder and ball carrier on the team. You know, these are players that you just can't not have on the team and expect the team to be the same. It just doesn't work that way. But of the people that were on the team, I think going forward, we did make very good progressive passes and into their final third. I think the statistics of we have way more final third entries than Celtic did, which for a team that's just gotten back together with some new players, players in new positions, I would say that's not bad, especially under a brand new manager without really having established good patterns of play yet. Not bad. And I think you can still see some of the rust that's there. You know, I felt like Sterling had another good game, second game in a row. Um, but again, even his final ball was lacking when last season, you know, if he just chose to make the final ball and pass, I think it would have been fine, but he often chooses to be selfish. And then Matawake on the right, I I refuse to believe that his crossing's as bad as it's been the last two games, you know, and even him coming on to his strong side on the left hasn't really done all that much. But I, I'm just kind of laying down on early season you know, preseason blues, and hopefully he'll get a little bit better. Now, another big positive, which is still Mark Gu. I like this kid. The more and more I see him, his work rate, his passion, his strength, his pressing, his vision. There's so many times where he just, you know, he ran for the team. He ran down the channel. He ran after the ball. He kept it. He would either, you know, play back to goal, pass it off, or run behind the last man and then get everybody else on board. I think he was very unlucky today to not get a goal. He had several very good plays in the box. If it was just a little bit more clinical with time, I think I think all his positives are there. I, I actually so far have not really seen a negative in his game apart from just the finishing, which is supposed to be his strength. So hopefully that's just preseason, and I want to see more of him. I'm very glad that we got, I think, near 90 minutes of him today, and we did not see Broya because Broya did absolutely nothing that first game, and he's clearly trying to lead the club, and the club do not want him there. So I would say just focus on Giyu, focus on Jackson. Another positive, our set pieces already look better. I know we hired the new set piece coach from, I think it was Brentford last season. Um, you can already tell we are consistently being the first man. All of our crosses, our corners are actually making it to a Chelsea player that seems to be open. I think Fofana had a really good chance on a corner by Reese James during the game today if he was just a little bit more clinical with his header. It would have been a goal because he was wide open. And then James and Lavia both looked a little bit better going forward today, moving the ball forward and playing a little bit faster. I think they played a little bit better as a team. There were still a few loose passes here and there, a few runs that went nowhere, but overall, I think better. And that's about it for the positives. Now let's go on to negatives. Again, I don't want to spend too much time on this. I don't want to be too negative Nancy because it is preseason. I think it's too early to judge if a play 
team plays well in preseason, just like it's too early to judge if a team plays poorly. You know, look at last season. We were amazing in preseason. And guess what? When the season started, we played nothing like how we played in preseason for the rest of the year. So make it where you will. Um, but the negatives, I think I'm starting to see a big problem with our midfield and defense. And some of it is down to a brand new system and some of it is down to just bad personnel. So let's start with the system. Clearly, both Malagusto and James, they need time to get used to this inverted role. I think going forward, they know what they're doing. But going backwards, that's a huge difference. Because if we, let's say, suddenly lose the ball in midfield, then Reese James has to make a split-second decision on whether he needs to run back into right back. If he needs to stay in the middle, what is he to do? And if he makes the wrong decision, then he basically leaves Lavia all on his own and he gets so easily bypassed. And then our midfields who are higher up like Chukumeka, Mudrick, Sterling, whoever it is, they don't tend to track runners. And so we are so easily beat on the counter. It's like a gaping hole. Wherever James is not, is just a gaping hole. And part of the issue is that the people in defense either don't have the intelligence to fill it or they don't have the speed to fill it. So you kind of in the first half saw both Fafana and Badeshil, no communication. Badeshil just constantly gets left in no man's land. Either he's not sprinting back or he doesn't, know, he's just not aware of the danger, right? And then second half, he saw the same issue where now easily balls are played over the top and Tosin, as good as he is with his vision and going forward, man, this guy seriously lacks pace. It is frightening how easily Celtic were able to get the ball behind him time and time and time again and that's going to be a big issue because he doesn't have cover right sanchez isn't that fast he's not going to be able to cover like 30 40 yards on his own behind tosin and tosin doesn't have the pace to make up for it so it's it's even more important on our midfielders and our attack to either press on the ball stop those big passes overhead or something's got to change where somebody's got to be able to provide cover to tosin because right now the way it is if we play with this defense in the Premier League, we are going to get torn apart. We're going to get torn apart by most of the teams that know how to play on the counter. And then down to personnel. First thing is Sanchez. You know, did he have a few really good saves today? Yes. But number one, we should not be having to rely on him to make last second saves against Celtic. That just should not be happening, right? There's going to be way better teams in the Premier League than Celtic. That are going to absolutely roll over us and we cannot rely on him to make incredible worldly saves second problem which is my biggest problem with him is that if you listen to his interview he says oh he thinks he can do a percentage because it needs someone with balls to play the way maresca wants sure sanchez i get it you have the balls to play how you think you should be playing but you don't have the ball playing ability to do so and that is a humongous difference you know, in the second half, he did what he did multiple times last season, which is he let one pass go straight to a Celtic player, and he was caught in no man's land like 30 yards away from goal. If that happens in the Premier League, we're getting punished for sure, and that's a goal that he's given up in that game. And then we were lucky that we weren't punished on that one. But just a few minutes later, when you have defenders sprinting back at him and four Celtic players pressing all at once, Sanchez plays a ridiculous pass to Badeshil's inside foot where he was getting pressed the hardest. And of course, Badeshil, I don't know what's happened to him the last year, but his confidence is just gone. And his back pass was horrendous, just complete lack of awareness. And I'm sorry, from what I've seen the past year, he's just not good enough. Between him and Sanchez, they're both not good enough. And the scariest thing is, as a club, we've decided to sell Trevor Chalaba. Trevor Chalaba would have done that role perfectly, right? He has the vision to play passes forward. He is a good defender. He can organize the defense. Look at our stats last season after he came back from injury. Our most wins came during that part of the season while he was in defense. And then he's got the recovery pace if a ball is played over top. He's literally every he has every quality of a player that we want on the back right. And we're just supposed to assume that Fofana, after two years of two devastating injuries, is enough to start in that position? I don't think so. 
Fofana needs cover. Chalba would have been the perfect cover. Way more talented than either Desasi or, from what I've seen so far, Tosin. And a sure as hell better than Badiashil. And that's the guy that we left out of the traveling squad for this preseason. Like, I don't get it. And sure, Desasi has passion. That's probably his best quality. But guess who also has passion for a club a hundred times over? Chalaba. Why are we getting rid of this guy? I promise you, whatever team gets Chalaba, he will be sold as one of the best defenders wanted by the top teams in the Premier League in just a few years. Just wait. So I find that absolutely infuriating. And my God, this new goalie, Jorgensen, man, he better be able to play with his feet. Otherwise, our recruitment team truly have no clue what they're doing. And I better not see Sanchez start in front of a new goalie. I better not. This we cannot. This system doesn't work without a goalie who can play well with his feet. It just flat out does not work. And so far, Sanchez cannot play with his feet. Too many errors. And the last thing that I think this game and the first game shows me is that, man, do we miss a player like Caicedo. Lavia looks very good, especially with taking the ball and going forward with his long-range passing. But Caicedo can do both of those things too. And Caicedo can actually defend a hell of a lot better than what Lavia has shown to do so far. That might be a little bit unfair given that Lavia just came back from a year-long injury. That's fine. But all I want is, actually all this shows is that if we're going to play with an inverted fullback, number one, that inverted fullback has to be incredibly intelligent at reading the game and hopping back onto defense when it's needed. And two, they must be next to Caicedo. So I cannot wait for Caicedo to get back with the team. But then that brings the awkward question of where is Enzo going to play? Is Enzo going to play as one of the eights? Is he going to play instead of Drewsbury Hall, who we just spent a lot of money on? And that being said, where's Drewsbury Hall been? Is he injured? Can someone tell me? Is he injured? Is he not injured? I feel like he's been training with the team and has been doing fine, but Maresca hasn't used him at all in both preseason games. I don't I don't really understand that. He wasn't playing internationally over the summer break. Uh, he just played for Leicester. He should have had his vacation. He should have been with the first team for a bit now. Yeah, it's very strange. Hopefully we do see some of him next game. Um, Mudrick, I thought... There would be something interesting from this game from him. Uh, to be honest with you, I've watched the first half twice now. I I don't remember seeing him apart from one run and one cross that went to nobody. So Mudrick is still Mudrick. Even without this stupid haircut, he is still the same player. Highly concerning. Uh, we need Sterling there and somebody else, please. <laughs> please just call up Tyreek George for the season and just play him there because he seems to have more tactical discipline and knowledge than Mudrick. And my God, do we need Palmer back? So yeah, this was a extremely disappointing game. I don't want to be too negative. Uh, I don't want people to say Maresca out. No, that's, that's silly. That's stupid. Like this is a brand new system. Clearly it takes a lot of training and finesse to play with an inverted fullback this well with such a high line with the goalie who can play with his feet like all this takes time and coordination and communication to set up so i still see a lot of positives especially going forward i feel like we are more fluid we are able to create more chances than before we just need better thought process more composed in the final third and i think someone like palmer brings so much to that and even someone like enzo as an eight would be able to spray around passes and hopefully Drewsbury hall can do that and he's a better shot than enzo but yeah but the midfield and defense especially in transition especially in actual defending we have a lot to work on this preseason you know the season's coming up very soon i think we only have two more preseason games left against club america and then Real Madrid, who are absolutely going to tear us a new one on the counter if we let them, and if we don't learn these lessons quickly. So, man, see you guys after the next game. Peace.